Hey everybody! In this lesson, we're going to discuss how different algebraic forms of parabolas relate to each other. In previous lessons, we discussed the geometry of parabolas and how they all look, um, how the equations can tell us stuff about how a parabola looks. Today, we're mostly going to focus on the algebraic parts. So, there are different forms of a parabola uh, and they appear differently algebraically. So, first is the general form of a conic. Now, this can represent any conic section. Uh, it has no parentheses in it. It's rather simple looking. But if b equals zero, in other words, if the xy term is zero, then when a or c, but not both, are equal to zero, that's going to be a, a parabola. And we learned that in our first lesson where we did all these explorations. Now, the focus directrix form, we've, which we've spent most of our time dealing with, is the form in which you have something squared is equal to 4p times the uh, other variable and it's displaced by h and k the vertex of these appear at h and k and the appeal of this form is that it's very clear where the vertex is it's just h k and it also tells us a lot about where the focus is and where the directrix is and what direction it's pointing and stuff like this and the other form which we didn't discuss yet and is usually discussed in a when you first learn more basic algebra is the vertex form which is kind of similar to the focus directrix form, except it doesn't really tell us about the focal distance, at least not directly. Um, and it's solved for y. So this is just a, a function of x. Uh, it isn't like the uh, focus directrix form in which x and y are both kind of mixed up and it's not solved for either one of them. And the goal of today's lesson is to be able to convert between forms. So uh, let's begin by discussing uh, some examples that you'll try out and then we'll go over. The first question, uh, the following is a parabola in focus directrix form. x minus 2 squared is equal to 8 times y minus 3. Convert it to the general form of a conic. That is, get rid of all the parentheses and have them laid out in this order. Now, some of the coefficients may equal 0. Um, in fact, you might be able to know ahead of time which should be equal to 0 if you think about it. And are the coefficients you found unique? In other words, can you generate another set of coefficients that result in the same parabola? Try it out. Okay, so we're going to go over the first example. So all you really need to do is expand. If you do not know how to expand, in an earlier lesson, uh, we discussed in one of the appendices how we expand uh, when you multiply one, uh, one expression by another. So I encourage you to go back to an earlier lesson. Um, the link is in the, in the description if you don't know how to do that. So then you get everything over to one side. You can subtract 8y and uh, add 24 to both sides. And then you just simplify the side by adding the 4 and the 28 together and putting them in the order. So you have x squared minus 4x minus 8y plus 28 is equal to 0. That is in the general conic form. And uh, these are the values of the variables. a equals 1, b is equal to 0. Again, b has to be equal to 0 for this to be a vertical or a horizontal parabola. And c is equal to 0 because either the x squared term or the y squared term uh, has to have a 0 coefficient or just not appear. And the other ones are just the numbers that are there. Now, is this set of values unique? No, because you can multiply both sides of the equation by any non-zero number to get the same conic section. So for example, if I multiplied the equation by two on both sides, I would get the same parabola as before. Task two is going the other way. Here is a parabola that's in the general conic form. And I would like you to try to convert it to a uh, focus directrix form as shown in that red rectangle. Now, if you don't know how to complete the square, you won't be able to do this. Um, and so I encourage you to go to the appendix if you don't know how to complete the square. If you do know how to complete the square, then try it out. Or you can, of course, simply wait until we go over it. But one way or another, you should try it out or go to the appendix before we actually solve the, the problem. So try it out. Okay, so uh, we're going to go over this now. Now, wishful thinking is a useful way of solving problems in math. So we see a parenthesis, we want to somehow get a parenthesis. We see something squared, we think to ourselves, what can we do to get it squared? And the answer is we complete the square. So the steps are for completing the square. And some of these um, steps are depend on your own personal preference and some are truly essential. So what I like to do before I complete the square is get all the x terms to one side. So we have x squared plus 4x is equal to negative y minus 3. 
And we get that by subtracting y, um, y and 3 from both sides of the equation. And then to complete the square, we take half of the center, half of the x coefficient, which is 4, and then square it. So half of 4 is 2, then square it to get 4, and we add that to both sides. And if we complete the square, uh, then we can always factor that left-hand side as a squared um, expression. So this is x plus 2 squared on that one side. And we're, we have the left-hand side matching the focus directrix form. The right-hand side doesn't match because we don't have parentheses. And it might be a little bit confusing as to how exactly we get these parentheses here. And the answer is uh, we want to factor out, in this case, a negative or a negative 1 so in order to get that parenthetical expression. So we factor out a negative, and then we have negative parentheses y minus 1. And now we're in focus directrix form. Now, another way to look at this is it's negative 1 is the number that's factored out. And both of these are acceptable forms of the focus directrix form. Normally, you'd leave the negative 1 out, and you would be expected to know what that meant if it was just a negative in front. And in this case, the 4p is equal to negative 1. And if you needed to find out the focal distance p, you can simply solve that equation, and you'd find that p is negative 1 fourth. Now, task 3 is the same task, but with much harder numbers. And so this is a question of whether you'll be able to do the same thing when the numbers get a little bit hairy. Uh, I use decimals in my answer. You could feel free to use fractions or decimals, but um, it's going to be annoying numbers to deal with, and I'm just putting this for you as an exercise. So try it out. So we have a few obstacles here. The first thing is always I like to isolate the x squared and the x term, or you know the squared term and the non-squared term with the same variable. And then our obstacle is we can only complete the square if the leading coefficient is 1, and right now it's a 2. So in different sorts of problems, there are different days, ways of dealing with this, but the way we're going to use for now is divide both sides by 2. And I'm leaving everything in terms of decimals uh, for now. And now we're able to complete the square, except that it's annoying to do this. We have to take half of 2.5 and square it. Half of 2.5 is 1.25, and then we square it. Now, what I'm going to write in my notation is just 1.25 squared. You don't have to always immediately evaluate things. In fact, sometimes it's easier to just write the, the operations you would do to get to the number, and only later do you worry about simplifying it. So on the left-hand side, um, that simply is going to become uh, x plus 1.25 squared. And on the right-hand side, at this point, I'm going to simplify the negative 4.5 plus 1.25 squared on a calculator to get my result there. Um, so now, again, the left-hand side matches the focus directrix form of x minus h squared. It's the right-hand side we have to deal with, and the number that we have to factor out is the negative 2. So we factor out the negative 2, and we get y plus 1.46875. Now, how do we get that number? That is simply the negative 2.9375 divided by negative 2. So when we factor out a number, uh, we can divide that number because really we're going in reverse from when we distribute and expand. Uh, it's because negative 2 times 1.46875 is going to be that highlighted number, negative 2.9375. Uh, and at this point, we're done. It's in focus directrix form. 4p is negative 2. You could find the focal distance. The vertex is negative 1.25 and negative uh, one point. 4, 6, 8, 7, 5, the x and y value, respectively. Our last task is to figure out the relationship between these two forms, which have a lot of things in common. Namely, it has an x minus h squared in both of them. We want to learn how these forms are connected. So the task is, given the focus directrix form, solve for y. Algebraically solve for y. And then compare your answer to the vertex form and find a connection between our two other variables uh, a and P. So um, try to solve for Y. You might not fully understand what this means, um, but your goal is to isolate Y in the first uh, box to the left. So try it out. Okay, so 
We start off with the focus dielectric form and our goal is to solve for y. So we want to get y by itself. So we need to do opposite operations on both sides to do this. You can divide both sides by 4p to get the, the y minus k alone. And then you can add k to both sides uh, to finally find, and all I did was reverse the order in these last two, that y is equal to x minus h squared divided by 4p plus k. Now, this kind of resembles the focus form, but not entirely, okay? So the key is to realize that a is multiplying x minus h squared, and so we want to write this in terms of multiplication, not in terms of division. And whenever we multiply, sorry, whenever we divide by something, we can also multiply by one over that thing. Uh, and then we can see that in one equation, the, the equation is exactly the same as vertex form, except that in the equation we derived, we have 1 divided by 4p there in vertex form, it's an a, but those two are exactly the same thing. So that tells us a relationship between a and p, namely, the a in vertex form does tell us about the focus directrix, albeit indirectly through the formula a is equal to 1 over 4p. So the a in vertex form actually does implicitly, although not directly, uh, tell us stuff about the focus and the directrix of the parabola. And other variations of this formula, just through some manipulation, can be p is equal to 1 over 4a and 4p is equal to 1 over a. Um, so if someone gives you a vertex form, you can find out the uh, focal distance and where the focus is and the directrix is by using these conversion formulas as need be. All right, so that's it for today's lesson. Um, upcoming is the appendix, if you didn't understand completing the square. Next time, we're going to begin discussion of our second form of a conic section, uh, the ellipse. Until then, have a great day. Okay, so the purpose of this appendix is to learn how to complete the square. So suppose you have a trinomial on the left-hand side like this, and you want to factor it. You might not know how to factor it, uh, especially as a square, which is what we want to do in these types of problems. Um, so first of all, the technique that I'm about to show you only works when the leading coefficient is a one. If it's not a one, then you have to do something to get it to be a one. And that's a separate discussion, but just note that it has to be a one. Now, the way that you do this is first subtract seven from both sides to get the x squared plus six x all by itself. That's my recommendation to think clearly about this. And then we want to add a certain number to both sides that'll make this factorable. And the number that we add to both sides is going to be half of this middle term squared, half of six, then squared, half of six is three, then squared is going to be nine. So we're going to add nine to both sides. And if we add this number to both sides, the result will always be factorable. In this case, you can write the left hand side as x plus 3 squared and the right hand side as y plus 2 because negative 7 plus 9 is 2. And that's it. You've completed the square. You've gotten this left hand side to become a squared binomial. And let's check it to see if we're right. So using the box method of distributing x times x is x squared, uh, 3 times x is 3x. There's two of those. And then 3 times 3 is 9. So that result, when we add it all up, uh, 3x plus 3x is 6x. So we get the original binomial back when we do this. Uh, so this is the process of completing the square. Again, we didn't get too much into the, um, all the possible cases that one could do. But basically, the idea is isolate the x squared and x terms on one side of the equation, have the x term coefficient, and then square it, and add that to both sides. And then the trinomial that's a result will always be factorable as a square of a simpler binomial.